Welcome to Spirit of Truth Ministries, where love and truth is revealed. We are so excited that you decided to join us on your Saturday morning. Amen. And don't forget about our prayer calls at Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. We want to make sure that you um, join us for that. It's available to anyone. Uh, the number is right there on the screen. Hallelujah. Amen. We have a powerful time in prayer on Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. And as my uh, husband would say, it's actually prayer and prophecy. So we want you guys to join us for that, for some um, prophetic words and some intercessory prayer. Amen. Well, we're excited that you join us today. We want you to go ahead and invite your followers, um, send out the link to somebody, invite a friend. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get started with service this week. I'm excited about what the word is going to be on today. Amen. I just want that manna from heaven and hallelujah. So let's go ahead and go into a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Gracious and heavenly Father, we just thank you today, Lord God, for what you're doing and what you have done, oh Father. We thank you, oh Lord God, that we are blessed to be a blessing, Lord. We pray, oh Father God, that you will continue to um, do things in our lives, Father God, that strengthen us, oh Lord God. Allow us to be strengthened by each other, be strengthened by the word of God, be strengthened by our prayer life, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, for Spirit of Truth Ministries. I pray, Lord God, for this service service, Lord. I pray for Pastor Kevin, Lord God, that you would just give him a rhema word, Lord God, from on high and none of his words shall fall to the ground. We thank you for every person that will visit the live broadcast this morning, Lord God. And we ask, Father God, that you just give them a supernatural word that would apply to their life today in Jesus' name. We thank you, O oh Lord God, that you are all things to all people, Lord God. Whatever we stand in need of, Lord God, we can just reach up and grab it, Lord God, and it's ours. So, Father, today, Lord, I decree and declare over every believer that comes on this line that they will be free, that they will be whole in you, O oh Lord God, through the word, Father God, and through this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're so excited this morning because God is going to download. Amen. I don't even, I ain't even heard the word yet, but I already know it's going to be good. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and go into a time of worship. And right after that, you will hear from Pastor Kevin. We just begin to give God some glory and honor right here. Thank you. Right here. Just open your mouth. Jesus. 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 Jehovah. Jehovah. Oh 
Yeshua, I'm a seer. 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on. Come on. He's my Savior, Savior, Savior. Yeah, 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 yeah. My Savior, Savior, Savior. Oh, oh, oh Savior, Savior, Savior. Oh, Savior, Savior, Savior. Minister. Yeah, yeah. My friend, my friend, my friend. That's it, yeah. that's it. He's my friend until the end. Yeah. He's my friend, my friend, my friend. He's worth it, worth it, worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's worth it, worth it, worth it. He's worth it, worth it, worth it. He's worth it, worth it, worth it. Come on, come on, come on. He's worth it, worth it, worth it. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome again to Spirit of Truth Ministries. I'm Pastor Kevin. Hey, I hope you've had a wonderful week so far, and I hope you had a wonderful and safe Fourth of July weekend. And just welcome again to our worship service. And uh, if you have not yet done so, please hop over to our YouTube channel and hit that subscribe bell and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Spirit of Truth Ministries, so you can get notified every time we go live. So welcome again to our Saturday morning worship service. Wasn't worship just wonderful right there? And so I thank Pastor Dewella for giving giving us that wonderful, powerful prayer this morning. And there is a word from the Lord and stuff. So if you can, go ahead and turn your Bibles to 1 Peter uh, chapter 3. But we're going to go into a word of prayer first so we can get started on today. So most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you again for this time. We thank you for your continued grace and mercy that you have over our lives, Lord God. Lord, we just thank you for the patience that you have with us each day as we pursue you daily, O oh God. We just ask that you continue to fill us with your spirit, fill us with your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding in this time, oh God, that we can understand that even when we suffer through things, oh God, you are right there with us, oh God, that you give us the grace and the power to make it through, oh God. And all these things today, Lord, we just ask you to open our ears and open our mind and open our heart to understanding your word today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Okay, so uh, the scripture we're coming from today is 1 Peter chapter 3, and we're going to start at verse 8, and of course we're coming with the book that I've been reading for the past few weeks, the New Living Translation, so let's go into it real quick. It's not going to be a complicated word today. We're just going to let the Holy Spirit use me as he sees fits today. So we're going to start at verse 8, New Living Translations, and it says, finally, all of you should be of one mind, sympathize with each other, Love each other as brothers and sisters. Be tenderhearted and keep a humble attitude. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That's what God has called you to do. And he will grant you his blessings. For the scripture says, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Ooh, isn't that difficult sometimes? <laughs> but we need to do that. Uh, turn away, verse 11, turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. That's an important part right there. Verse 12, it says, the eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and the ears are open to their prayers. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. Now, you will want to now uh, you will want to harm you if you are eager to do good. Mm. But even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. So don't worry or be afraid of their threats. Mm. Let's say that one more time. Uh, so don't worry or be afraid of their threats. Verse 15. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks you about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. Mm. But do this in a gentle and respectful way. That's going to be a key one right there. Keep your conscience clear. Then if people speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what you what you what, what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. Remember, it is better to suffer for doing good 
if that is what God wants, we talk about his will, then to suffer for doing wrong. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word. So as I was getting ready for this sermon today, I didn't really know what the Lord was telling me to do with this one. And I, I thank Pastor Dewella for kind of giving me the title for today. And so the title for today's sermon is going to be, You Belong to Christ. And so one thing about this passage of scripture that uh, I wanted to have you to take notice, a couple of points in here that we're going to look at today. And some of these are basically uh, things that we need to understand as brothers and sisters in Christ about doing good and suffering for Christ. It's going to be some of the two things that we're going to talk about. And so we know that sometimes in this walk, it's hard to do a lot of the things uh, that we know the scripture says we should do because the world is trying to tell us to do something different. We want to love our brothers and sisters, but the Lord said we should hate, but the, but the world is trying to tell us we need to hate those who don't agree with us. Mm. Yeah, see, see, it's, it's, see, we should love our brothers and sisters in Christ and we should love those, our neighbors, as we love ourselves. Isn't that one of the great commandments right there? And so in that, we see that the world always wants us to do contrary to what the word says. So we should hate those who don't agree with us. And we know that that's not the position that we should have as believers in Christ. But we see that, that even when we do uh, tip into the realm of what the world believes and stuff, we can sometimes find ourselves on the wrong side of the gospel. We can find ourselves on the wrong thing that what God has called us to do. We can find ourselves on the wrong side of many things. And sometimes we can walk contrary to what God has called us to do and not even know us. That's that reprobate mind. We, 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 we want to do good, but we always do wrong. Or every time I want to do good, evil is always present. And so in doing, in doing these things, we need to come to an understanding that in this day and age, that there's going to be a greater calling for us to do what is right. Even though we want to do what our flesh calls us to do, we have to take a position of understanding, well, wait, what does the word of God say? What should I do in this manner? Should I speak about, should I speak ill about this person because I don't agree with what they're doing? Or should I speak blessings to this person and love them regardless of what they're doing? Because we understand that love covers a multitude of faults. And so if we practice those very things in what the scripture says, we can learn that a lot from just our Christian walk. And a lot of people in the world can learn a lot from our Christian walk. That's what we talked about here in uh, verse 15. And if anyone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. See, I like that part of that scripture right there because we as believers should always be ready to explain our hope, our hope in Jesus Christ. We should be able to have that relationship that we could tell them at any given moment about our Lord and Savior, about the one who saved us from our sins and put us on a path that we can walk with an expected hope to an expected end. And see, it's hard sometimes to, to in, in a wicked world where we see a lot of killings and shootings and murders going on around the world and carjackings and everything. It's hard to kind of understand some of the things that, that we should be doing as Christians in this dark world. But the mission has not changed. What you say, the mission template for my military people, the mission template for us as believers has not changed. It's still the same. And so we can't walk in this world and do evil for evil. We can't repay someone who does evil against us with evil because that's not walking with the light of Christ. We should always uh, be, one of my favorite things is we should always be slow to speak, but quick to listen because that can, 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 can quench a lot of uh, arguments between uh, believers and even believers and non-believers. Because sometimes we have to take the time to listen to one another to see what it is that they're trying to say, to get an understanding about things that we might not understand. Because as it is, as we as believers and those who are not believers, sometimes we come at odds because we don't understand what each other is saying. See, you can't come to someone in the world and speak church and ease to them because they're not going to understand it. They haven't been a part of the body of Christ. So they're not going to understand what it is to love thy brother or to love thy sister. But they will understand something with just saying, I love you. OK, so or, you know, those kind of things like that could get us in a position that we can actually share the gospel with those who don't believe in Jesus Christ. See, it's not something fancy or something where you have to have a very large vocabulary to speak eloquent words and allegories to help bring people to an understanding of Christ. See, it's something just as a simple conversation with someone about how what he has done for your life. 
And see, even when we go through these times, and I've learned this in my life in many years, is that even when we go through sufferings in our life, even when we go through trials and tribulations, that even that has an opportunity to bring someone to Christ. Even that very moment where we might be down and out or even uh, feel like we might not even know the answer, but we know where our answer comes from, that we can share the gospel with the, our fellow unbelievers, those who don't believe in Christ. Because they might be trying to find out how are you making it through this? How are you overcoming these obstacles? Because I'm in the same situation as you, but I don't see my, I don't see any way out of it. But then that's a way that you could say, Hey, uh, because I belong to Christ, I have expect, I've had expected hope that he's going to take care of my situation. And see, these are just some of the things that I've experienced even in my life that I can share with you through these things. And I don't know exactly what it is that, that this message is going to hit you where, where the Lord needs it to hit at. But there's a time that's coming upon us that we need to be able to be able to stand firm and not be swayed by public opinion. We can't be swayed by what the world says, but we have to be able to stand boldly and proclaim that God has done this for me and, for, and he could do it for you too. That you don't have to stay in this particular place for your life right now. You can move to this place if you just accept him and walk the walk that he has for you. See, it's something called God's will for our life that many of us sometimes don't un quite understand. And so if we look at the scripture here real quick, uh, verse 11, it says, turn away from evil and do good. See, one of the one of the ways that we can get to a place is just a, a place of peace in our life. Is, is just to turn away from doing evil. It, it, we might say, well, what, well, well Pastor Kevin, what is, what is evil? Evil is anything that's contrary to the word of God. It's speaking ill words against someone who's never done anything to you. It's, it's speaking negative about situations that you know nothing about. OK, it's something where you're, you're, you're always trying to find the bad in a situation and never seeking the good. See, it's not just what you actually do, it's sometimes what you think. And so what you think sometimes can be evil thoughts that can actually work contrary to the blessings that God is trying to move in your life. And we ever heard that saying of, uh, I don't want to block my blessings. Sometimes many of us have blocked our blessings because we spoke ill about someone who God had told us we need to bless. Okay. I don't, I don't know what this means right here, but see, but some of you have, have, have God has even told you to take the last $10 in your wallet and give it to someone right here that needed some bread to eat. But, but you decided, well, I, I, you spoke ill of that person because of the situation that they were in, but you didn't realize that God was trying to bless you by help, by having you bless them. And see, sometimes by us speaking evil things or even doing evil or even thinking evil thoughts, sometimes can put us in a position that we could be pushed on ourselves further away from God, but thinking we're serving him. Isn't that a bad situation to be in? Well, I'm trying to tell you, brothers and sisters, that there's a way that we need to be uh, in these coming weeks. I know I said in this month of July that we were going to see some things that were going to come to pass and some things that were going to be revealed. But I'm feeling like there's something that here that we need to understand that the reason why the Lord gave me this passage of scripture today is that we need to understand the importance of suffering for Christ and what it is to suffer for him. Because there's nothing difficult, too difficult to, for God to handle. And see, in this time right now where, where we're, we're, we're into this phase right now, I want to say it, and even the phases that we're getting ready to go into, I'm going to bring a prophetic word next week, but there's some things that we're getting ready to go into that we need to understand that, that we can't retaliate for what happens to us. Many of us are already starting to see persecutions coming to the church. Is it just something that we just see, not just here in the United States, but even in other countries right now? In Canada, churches are being burned right now because of their belief in Christ. And so we, we, we haven't seen that here in this country yet, but it has happened before. But we can't be in a, in a position where we want to retaliate or do evil against those who do evil against us. We can't be tit for tat, in other words. And so we have to be in a position where we can seek Christ and be prepared to suffer with Christ for who we know Christ is in our life. I like one part of the scripture here. It says, uh, in verse 13, it says, Now who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? I don't know anyone yet that has wanted to harm me for wanting to do good towards them or for even wanting to bless someone. 
And I and I've been in some tough situations sometimes where where people uh, were who had a racist ideologies when I was years ago when I was working in a in a service industry I was I went to someone's house and and just to provide a service and when I opened up the door there was someone there who was uh uh what you could say uh I guess I could say a Nazi they 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 they, they, they believed in the Nazi ideology. So when here I am, a black man at this at this white individual's house, he became a tirade and angry because I was there and refused for me to serve him, even though he paid for the service. And so all that I could do in that very moment was continue the character of Christ that I had in me and just to speak good things, even though he was speaking evil towards me. And I didn't even know by even holding my composure and because I could have got irate, I could have got angry, but I understood exactly what I was facing up against. Because we know that the Satan goes around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. That could have been a very moment I could have been devoured. But God kept me in that very moment that I could still speak good towards this individual who wanted to do me harm. That even when later when my my uh, my supervisor went over there the next day, the guy didn't even understand what was the whole problem about. It's, it's like I said, my supervisor told him it's like his, his whole demeanor changed. And all I did was speak blessings before I left his house. And see, sometimes we have to be in situations where we don't want to be in, but we have to speak blessings. We have to speak good things instead of speaking evil. It's easy for someone to get irate because someone does you wrong. It's easy to let your temper flare because someone is doing something negative against you. But what I'm trying to tell you today is we need to be able to bridle our tongues in this season. And we have to really watch what comes across our lips because there's a blessing that God is trying to bring your way that you can't receive it if you do contrary to what the word says. Mm. Another part of the scripture with verse 13 says, don't worry about or be, don't be, don't worry or be afraid of their threats. See, there, there, there's something there when, when we as even when I looked at the prophet Jeremiah when, when, when uh, he said, "I'm too young to be this. I'm too, I'm not old enough to do this." He says, "Don't be afraid of their faces." And see, in this time period, we have to, we can't be afraid of their threats. Even when we know sometimes the threats are credible, we can't be afraid. At that moment, we have to be able to know that God has us because we belong to him. And see, we have to understand that, you know, when, when we come across obstacles, and this is even in our professional lives, in our businesses, or even when we, in our family, when we come against obstacles, that we have to understand exactly who we are in those very moments because there's going to be something that's going to be revealed later down the line. How you respond to situations can actually make a situation worse or it can quench anger. Speaking kind words in the midst of anger can diffuse many arguments. Isn't that scripture? Mm. So we have to be prepared for the very things that we are going to see. Because you belong to Christ. And so as we go through the rest of 2021, as we're halfway there to the end. As we go through the rest of this year, there's going to be some things that's going to baffle us. And things that we're not going to understand. But we can't be we can't be so willing to speak words that without understanding exactly what we're saying. We have to go into our prayer closet to get that that thing that the Lord can only reveal to us the truth through his word. That we can't be so quick to judge when we hear something and we can't be in a position where we can't say, well, that's not of God when it actually is God. See, we have to put on an even kilter plane to rightly divide the word of truth because we know there's going to be a time where, where good will be called evil and evil will be called good. We see that right now. And sometimes it's for even those who are unbelievers, it's hard for them to differentiate the difference between the two because the world wants it to be this particular way. So we know that that we, we know this in the word because the word told us it was going to happen. And so we see this day in, day in and day out. That the very things that were, were frowned upon 20, 30 years ago are accepted and openly accepted today. I'm not even going to mention what they are because you could probably understand exactly what they are. 
those very things that that our own parents were said was 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 contrary to the gospel, contrary to the to what God said, and even didn't even line up with even the, some of the commandments that He gave us. We're gonna get into that a little deeper next week. But my brothers and sisters, I just want to share this quick word with you today to help you understand that you belong to Christ. And just your light and your presence in certain situations, to don't be afraid. Stand firm in what God has called you to do. Whether it is just to give water to someone on the street that's homeless, or even to speak a blessing to someone at a restaurant, to even step in when you see wrong going on or you see someone being treated wrong, just to step in and speak a blessing and be good in those moments when it's time to be good. Because I guarantee you the Lord will bless you if you do so. I'm not talking about being a, a brave avenger or anything of that nature. No, I'm just talking about being generally good when evil is running rampant around this world. So I'm not gonna be here long today, but I once wanted to share this quick word with you today to help encourage you in this time period as we're getting ready to come into a new uh, sermon series coming up here in about a week. And I, I know this one's gonna be very powerful because we're gonna go into something that I've always wanted to get into the mode of teaching but I'm still uh, uh, listening to the Lord and what he's having me to come forth with this, but we're gonna get into the seven spirits of the seven empires. And it's gonna be a very pressing teacher. That's why these past few weeks I haven't gone really heavy because there's gonna be something we're gonna go really heavy into. And so I want to hold on, but I just wanna encourage you this time period that you belong to God. And don't give up, hold on, because your hope is coming very soon. And so if you want to take the time right now, if you are not a member of, a, of an assembly or you're not, have a, you don't have a covering or anything of that nature, or you just want to be a partner with us, if you even don't even know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, now is the time that you can do so. If you are watching right there, you can hit that uh, little uh, notification right there that says, I want to accept Jesus or I want to be saved. And one of our attendants will reach out to you and walk you through that process. But even if you don't get there, I want, to ask, I want to pray with you right now to help you through that transition. It's very simple. Just repeat after me. Most gracious and heavenly Father, thank you for my life. Thank you for saving me. I want you in my life. I open my heart to you. Renew me, cleanse me, and make me whole again. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. I thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done. I thank you for my spirit life. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Hey, if you prayed that simple prayer, welcome to the kingdom. Hey, I hope you have enjoyed uh, this, 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 this sermon series that we have done in the past and even these services that we're doing right now. And we just thank you all who have partnered with Spirit of Truth Ministries. And we just thank you all for continuing to go, go through this walk with us as we are continually making more changes and more plans and we're going forward in some new things. There's some new uh, uh, Avenues that are coming up, some new things. We got a revival coming up in October that we're going to be a part of in Houston, Texas. So more information will be coming forth on that in the broadcast. And we hope you can, if you're in the Houston area, you can be a part of that uh, revival that we have because we are getting into a season of revivals. And I'm glad to see that these things are coming back because it's much needed in this hour. And so I just look forward to those days and I look forward to spending time with you more. And so you can tune in again with us next week right here on Spirit of Truth Ministries. And if you wanna be a part of our Saturday morning prayer call, the number is right here on the screen. You can join with us at 8 a.m. on Saturday mornings. And then right after that, you can come right back to our website, catch us here at SOTRR.com. And again, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, Spirit of Truth Ministries, you can go over there and hit the subscribe button and hit the little notification bell, and you will be notified every time we go live. We thank you again for your time, and we hope you have a blessed and wonderful weekend. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye. Spirit of Truth Ministries is committed to sharing God's love and truth to the world. And your gift, no matter how big or small, is significant. You can give to the ministry by one of three ways. 
First, you can go to our website, www.sotrr.com, and click on Give. Second, you can give via Givelify. Just open the app on your mobile device and search for Spirit of Truth Round Rock. Or you can send your contribution via Cash App by entering the Cash App handle of dollar sign SOTRR. Become a partner and give a donation to the ministry so we can continue to bring the gospel of Christ to the nations. Thank you in advance and we appreciate your donations, prayers, and support.